Hey guys, in the previous video we talked about insertion sort and uh, while it's a fairly good algorithm, its running time is pretty bad at n squared. So can we do better? And the quick answer to that is, well, yes. And this is an algorithm that can do better. It's called merge sort. It follows some of the principles that one as a software engineer should follow and that is to divide and conquer your problems. And for the implementation in this video, we essentially have two algorithms for merge sort that plays a role. We have an algorithm to break everything down into smaller pieces to kind of divide. And then we have a, another function that's going to build these smaller pieces into bigger pieces and it's going to do that recursively. And that's part of the conquering part of the algorithm. So we do follow the divide and conquer in uh, merge sort with having a function that divides our array into several different manageable pieces and then we have like a merging algorithm that that conquers you know the separated pieces and merges it together so let's take a look at a my main program here i have a generic function to print the contents of a vector and here i have my vector k so i'll start off by printing my vector k and then I'm going to call merge sort, so merge sort. So how merge sort is going to work is merge sort itself is going to be a recursive function. And it's not until the end of all the, re all the recursive function calls that I, that I actually do the sorting. But for my initial function call for merge sort, it's going to be 0 and our size minus 1. That'll be our initial function call for merge sort. And then after, of course, we sort out our array, we're going to print our vector k. So let's talk about the dividing part of our merge sort. The dividing function, which I'm going to call, well, merge sort, is going to be a generic algorithm. So I'm going to have a template type name. And I'm going to call this type name m for merge sort. So we have our void, merge sort, and we're going to have a vector. And that's going to be of data type M. We're going to take a reference to V. And actually, how can I do merge sort here if I don't have my array that I want to sort? You know, so I have that. And I have my int, which will say left index. And then I'm going to have an int for the right index. So I'm going to create my mid index. That's how merge sort will start. And then I'm going to check if my left index is less than my right index and we want to check this to make sure that well it's true that our sorting is going to be in order and here's where we begin our dividing part of our algorithm so we're going to say mid is equal to left plus right divided by two and then I need to be index index and then I'm going to call merge sort again using k and the left index and we're kind of we're trying to chop it in half essentially so we have mid index and here this is supposed to be mid index right so here's like we kind of have the left side of the array and then we're going to do a chop with the right side of the array so this should be mid index plus one and then here we're going to have right index. Once we have these recursive function calls, what we're going to do is that we're going to merge, right? So, so these two lines, line 18 and line 19, are going to be our divide, part of our divide and conquer. And here we're going to have our conquering part, which will merge our separated pieces of our array. And it'll merge while sorting it together. Right, so we'll take these broken pieces and by merging it all together, while we merge it, we're going to sort it. And that'll be it for the merge sort part. So I have this recursive piece to break everything up and then I have merge to bring everything together. And while we're going to be bringing everything together, we're going to be sorting it. So we're going to sort while we merge. With that out of the way, why don't I start the code for merge? So as you could tell, spoiler alert, merge is going to take four arguments and I'm going to use the same template name. So I'm going to have merge and it's going to be our vector m or v of data type m where m is some arbitrary data type. This can be a string, a complex number, an integer. Uh, in our case, we test for integers. 
and we're going to have our left index, our mid index, and our right index. So when we're merging, um, the idea is, is that we have two split pieces. We have two broken pieces. So we're going to need three iterators. I, which is going to mostly access our, our left like subarray. We're going to have J, which is going to access our right subarray. And then we're going to have K, which is going to be accessing our merged array. Next, I'm going to allocate a uh, space or the size of my left vector and my right vector or I guess sub vectors before I combine them, which would be mid index minus left index. Oh man, there we go. Plus one. And then we're going to have our right size as equal to right index because right index will be bigger than our middle index our mid index minus one or no we'll just leave it like that so now that I have the size I'm going to create my left and right sub vectors uh, directly so I'm gonna have a std vector M and it's going to be left vector and I'm going to create it with left size items and then right vector which is going to be created with right size items. Next, I'm gonna fill them out from values of V. So we'll have I equal to zero, I less than left size, I plus plus. I don't want that space there. And we'll essentially copy it over. So we'll say left vector of I is equal to V of left index plus i. So why am I using uh, left index plus i? So v is going to be our source vector and with these left, middle, and right indices, the, we're really creating sub vectors here of what our division is supposed to look like. So it's kind of, we're kind of creating these sub vectors here and that's where it's really divided. Um, our recursive merge sort function call really divides the indices. Because we're defining the indices, this actually lets this algorithm become an in-place algorithm where the only addition of vectors that we have to create is this. And actually, I'm going to have to repeat the same process for this, but I'll have it for J instead. So we have J, and we're going to change this to the right size and then J plus plus place this with J we're going to replace this with the word right and then plus J so here with these two statements we're going to be creating our left and right sub vectors from V right these are the divided elements of the array um, but I mean it's supposed to be right and now that that's done, now that I've created my left subarray or my right subarray, I'm going to reset the values of i and j. And then I'm going to say k is going to be equal to the left index because that's when we're going to start adding our value. So in, in this case, we don't know the contents of our right side vector or our left size vector. So we need to be comparing them both at the same time. So I'm going to have a while loop that says while i is less than left size and j is less than right size meaning that we don't get to the end of those respective arrays first I'm gonna say while they are that way while we are not at the end of either of them I'm going to have to compare them here so I'm going to say if left vector of i is less than or equal to right vector of j. If that's the case, I'm going to say v of k is equal to left vector of i. I will increment i, and then otherwise, if that's not the case, we're going to say v of k is equal to a right vector of j and then we need to increment J. And before I forget right here, regardless of what happens, I need to be incrementing K. So this while loop covers when we need to compare our right vector and left vector with each other, but there's going to come a time where either one or the other is going to finish. So we need to have two while loops to make sure that we add the contents of 
the left side if the right side runs out or the right side if the left side runs out first. First we're going to check while i is left less than the left size right because again there's two possibilities that we might break out of this while loop where j is increased above the right size or when i is above the left size right so if i is above the left size that means j isn't so we need to copy the rest of j into our v on the other side though it might be that j grows greater than the right size and we still have elements on the left size that we need to copy over so that's why i have this while loop down here so i'm going to say v of k is equal to left vector of i and then i'm going to in increment i and k and then we're going to essentially do the same thing for the right size the right side i mean so this is the circumstance where if our i outlives the, the left size we need to make sure that we copy the rest of j into here and that's how we'll do our merge so this is pretty wild it's a little bit complicated um, but let me try to let, let's go back and kind of explain the code here so here with merge sort we have our divide methodology where we take our vector v and we have a left and a right index and essentially what this this part of merge sort does is that it splits up the left and right indices and it keeps splitting it until there's one or two elements left right so our, our indices get split to like every single one of these elements and once we have two elements we start merging them and when we merge them we create copies of what we're going to merge so this might be you know two elements we're going to be merging it two separate elements are going to be merged with each other or one half of the array is going to be merged with the other half of the array and that's going to be you know n over two elements either way we need to copy those elements to our left and right vector because that's our split right our split's going to be a left split and a right split because we keep splitting our vectors into two so with that we compare the two vectors and as we're merging them we're sure that we're adding them in the right order so some elements of left vector might be greater than or less than the elements of right vector. So we need to compare each and every one of them before we add them to V as, as it's sorted. But it might be the case that, you know what, maybe, you know, all but two of the values on the left side might be less than and we didn't put any of the right side into V yet. So we need to clean up the rest of our left side. And if this part sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry too much. Uh, there's, an, there's going to be a visualization video on this algorithm as well, and that should shed some light. But this is the part where we merge everything together. And, uh, and again, while we're merging everything together, we're going to be sorting while we're merging. So what does this mean in terms of runtime before we uh, run our program here? Well, merge sort has um, a new runtime that you haven't heard in these previous videos that is n times log base two of n. So the log base two of n comes from us here splitting our indices in half which in theory means that we keep splitting our array or and vector in half kind of like how binary search does it with our middle how we calculate the middle index merge sort kind of borrows that property from binary search however as we split it up into twos when we go about merging it we need to merge every single element of the array so that's why it's n times log base two of n, which I'll shorten to n times log n, right? Because as we're merging everything, we need to merge the whole entire array together. And if there's n elements in the whole entire array, well, we need n iterations to merge everything together. But what does it mean in terms of growth? Is it better than insertion sort? Is it better than the runtime of linear sort? Is it better than the runtime of binary search? Well, binary search is the fastest algorithm that we have of the four, and merge sort is actually the third fastest. It's not faster than linear search because it's going to be n times log n, which means it'll grow slightly faster than n. However, all these algorithms are better than insertion sort because insertion sort has a whopping n squared, and that grows faster than any of these three. So merge sort with a running time of n log n is not too bad and in terms of sorting algorithms this is actually really good assuming that you have some random data in our vector m so why don't we go about now and run our program ah the errors found it needed to be mid index plus one plus j 
And this makes sense because this is mid index plus one is going to be our the beginning of our right subarray. So why I put right index there, I don't know. That was uh, going above bounds, and that would easily break my code. So why don't we see the if there's any errors now? As you can see, I put some debug statements. And actually, before I compile, I'm going to get rid of that. So let's see if everything works out. Ah, yes. Oh, that feels good. So one simple little error. And let's see that error one more time. So I allocated left left vector the size of left size and a right vector to the size of right size. And I said left vector of i is going to be equal to v left index plus i, which is the beginning of our left subarray. And then here, originally what I did is I said right underscore index plus j. And that shouldn't have been the case because the right index is going to be the far right of my right subarray. And that's prone to going out of bounds. So when I did right index plus j, I was just asking for copying data that's out of bounds. But mid index plus 1 is going to be the beginning of my right subarray. So this is the correct thing that I needed to do. So if you're following along and you had the error, you need to replace right index with mid index plus one. And now that this works and I can recompile and run again, um, this is merge sort. This is one of the faster sorting algorithms and it's really neat. Um, you really can't beat an algorithm this fast. Um, and I mean, there are more out there and they have similar run times to merge sort. I think one of the other ones that's super similar is quick sort that has an n log n runtime as well so in terms of algorithms like that uh, quick sort merge sort they're as fast as you can get but this is only with sorting an array like a normal vector it turns out if you put this data into a specific data structure uh, with its own specific structure rather than just being an array maybe you can make a i mean people make like a tree like data structure called like heaps and it turns out you can like sort and search those particular data structures even faster. So typically what people do is that they take an array, they convert it into like a tree-like data structure, and then searching and sorting is a lot quicker than using, you know, plain old like quick sort or merge sort. And I hope this uh, brings some insight to some searching and sorting algorithms. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.